Hello, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us for this webinar on the Saturday morning. I'm Dr. Amelia Chu. I'm from the Department of Restorative Dentistry in NDCS. And today I'll be sharing with you all about tooth loss and its replacement options. So before I begin, I just wanted to share a fun fact. The photo that you see over here in the background is actually a set of dentures that belongs to George Washington. So as we can see, um, there are many uh, ancient ways that they have uh, used to anchor the false teeth because he has lost all his teeth at an early age of 30 years old. So the teeth are said to be bought from slaves and some made from ivory as well. So this has been anchored and wired onto his, into his gums and he was said to be very uncomfortable. Thankfully, we don't use such primitive methods anymore and uh, we have better replacement options in store. Okay, so before I go on to the replacement, I'll share a few uh, reasons on why teeth are lost in the first place. The most common cause that we see is damage due to dental decay. So as we can see in the slide over here, the progression of tooth decay um, is as follows. Usually it starts as a small cavity and slowly it progresses to be bigger and deeper. Eventually it may progress to a stage that the tooth cannot be salvaged anymore, like the image on the furthermost right side and hence has to be extracted. Another common reason for tooth loss is gum disease. So as we can see on the image on the left side, it's an image of a healthy tooth on uh, healthy gums. If not maintained properly, when plaque builds up, it leads to inflammation of the gums leading to gingivitis, which is an early stage of gum disease. Further, further on, it can lead to periodontitis whereby there are pockets, meaning a gap between the teeth and the gums, leading to bone loss. And finally, if the bone loss is advanced, it may lead to advanced periodontitis, causing the tooth to be shaky and necessitating extraction. Another cause is trauma. Sometimes when patients are involved in accidents or fall, they may lose teeth as well. Sometimes patients are born with uh, a few or a couple of missing teeth and these congenitally missing teeth uh, are an example as we can see right here of a patient born without uh, the lateral incisors. So to provide some uh, numbers in a local context, when they did a survey in Singapore in 2017 on patients 65 years old and above, it was found that 69% of patients actually wore dentures and uh, 31 to 33 percent of the population actually had no more teeth remaining. So this is actually quite a high figure. So why do we need to restore missing teeth? Uh, they are mainly for these few uh, reasons, for speech, function, aesthetics, and to avoid shifting and drifting of the neighboring teeth. So missing teeth can make it difficult for us to pronounce certain words. Uh, we may experience slurring, lisping, or even spitting on saliva when speaking if uh, insufficient teeth are present. Missing teeth, especially the molars, uh, the back teeth, leads to problems with mastication, which is eating. And ineffective mastication can actually impact digestion and cause digestive issues. In terms of aesthetics, we can see the progression of uh, the bone loss uh, after teeth are being extracted in the images on the left side. So as we can see, teeth are actually supported by alveolar bone. Okay, so after tooth loss, the alveolar bone undergoes remodeling and resorption. So after it's being extracted, the, teeth, uh, the bones slowly start to shrink. And as we can see in the images, resorption after 10 years and 30 years, it shows that the bone continues to resorb and remodel with time. In terms of facial aesthetics, the loss of this uh, teeth and bone can also affect the facial profile. So as we see on the image on the left side, um, is a lady with a normal profile. After tooth loss, the face and cheeks are more sunken in. And as the bones are lost, um, the facial profile is even more collapsed. So once again, why this happens is because of the jawbone resorption through tooth loss. So, uh, when they have healthy jaw and teeth, everything is well supported. 
but the progressive bone loss and tooth loss leads to severe bony atrophy, which is a loss of bone and supporting structures. Another effect of tooth loss is uh, a space that it creates. So given that this uh, space is present, the teeth at the side of it, the neighboring teeth, as well as the tooth on top can actually over erupt or shift into the space um, present. So this causes the teeth to be slanted and crooked, uh, which may pose problems later on in terms of gap and gaps and uh, the ease of replacing the teeth later on should it be uh, necessary. So this is an example of a patient. So the loss of the space makes it difficult to replace the missing teeth. As we can see, the lower molars have been lost and the upper molars have actually drifted or over erupted downwards into the empty space. So this has occurred over a period of time. And in future, should the patient elect to replace the missing lower molars, the upper teeth either have to go through braces to lift it up, uh, root canal treatment and crowns to level the, the occlusal plane, or in the worst case scenario, have to be extracted in order to create space to replace the missing teeth. So how do we replace this missing teeth? There are a few methods that can be uh, done. So today in the presentation, I'll be going through dental implants, bridges and dentures. So firstly, we have dental implants. It can be used to replace single teeth or multiple teeth that have been lost. It is usually made of titanium alloy and provides a firm and stable foundation for the long-term support of the replacement teeth. And these materials have been shown to be biocompatible or well-tolerated by the body. So procedure-wise, uh, dental implants are usually carried out by a team of restorative specialists and the surgeons. So there's two specialties working in close collaboration. So firstly, the dental surgeon will assess your suitability for treatment with uh, dental implants, taking into account various factors like bone volume and quality to ensure that there's sufficient bone to envelope uh, the implant after it's being placed in, tooth and jaw relationships, oral habits, for example, if patients might have any uh, parafunction habits such as uh, grinding the teeth, and general medical health, if patients have any uh, contraindications to implants, for example, prior radiotherapy or uncontrolled diabetes. So usually it takes about four months to a year to complete the entire treatment. This would depend on the case complexity as well as the need for additional procedures like bone grafting or addition of bone if there's uh, insufficient bone in the first place. So the first phase of uh, dental implant placement uh, is treatment planning. Okay, so a thorough assessment of the medical health, oral health, the way the teeth fit together and the bone volume has to be done first to provide an individualized treatment plan. Okay, so this is done by taking off the mold, taking x-rays and even a three-dimensional scan known as a comb beam CT. Also, if there are pre-existing dental diseases such as gum diseases, it has to be treated first before carrying out dental implant treatment. Next, after the patient has been deemed suitable for implants, uh, we move on to the surgical treatment. So a minor surgery is used to place titanium fixtures into bone and it may increase, uh, may involve increasing the gum or bone volume at the same time. So the implant screw is placed in the jaw bone and allowed to heal usually for about three to four months before the crown is being placed on top. Some swelling and bruising is expected after the surgery. So after the implant has actually integrated to the surrounding bone, the mold of the implant will be made to register the position of the implant fixture. These molds allow us to create a custom crown for the implant. So as you can see in the picture over here is an example of a case of an implant on the right central incisor. Okay, and this is the x-ray that has been done uh, after the crown was cemented. In terms of maintenance, uh, this is a very important point 
because implants like teeth are also susceptible to gum infections and also other prosthetic complications such as uh, loosening of the screw, loosening of the implant crown, or sometimes chipping of the veneering porcelain. So we need to see these cases on a case-by-case -case basis to determine what are the best uh, ways to uh, uh, save the situation. For example, uh, the chipping is minor, we can smoothen the porcelain. If it's severe, sometimes a uh, redo of the crown might be necessary. So meticulous hygiene and regular dental reviews must be practiced to ensure the longevity of these implant crowns. The next replacement option I'll be covering are bridges. So a bridge is a fixed prosthesis that replaces missing teeth by using the neighboring teeth as support. A small number of missing teeth can be replaced if the neighboring teeth are sufficiently strong. So this is usually made of ceramic or a combination of metal alloys and ceramics to maximize the strength yet simulate a natural appearance of the teeth. So the first kind of bridge is a conventional bridge, okay, like in the image that we see at the bottom, whereby two crowns are joined to an artificial tooth to replace the missing tooth that's in the middle. So the healthy neighboring teeth are trimmed, okay, like we can see on the lower left uh, portion of the image. And then a bridge, which is this three unit uh, prosthesis, will be fabricated in the lab and then cemented on. Another type of bridge that we have is known as a resin bonded bridge. Okay, this, uh, in comparison with the conventional bridge, requires minimal trimming of the neighboring teeth um, and is usually used uh, uses cement to bond the bridge structure to the back of these teeth. So although this method conserves more tooth structure in terms of uh, not needing to grind out so much tooth structure, not all patients are suitable for it. We need to uh, assess it on a case-by-case -case basis if the way the patient bites, etc., are suitable for this case. And also this kind of bridge has a higher risk of complications such as debonding or loss of the bridge because it's not cemented in a way as securely as a conventional bridge. So procedure-wise, uh, firstly, your dentist will need to assess important factors such as the number of missing teeth, the condition of the neighboring teeth, as well as those of the supporting gums and bones to make sure that they are healthy enough to support a false tooth in the middle. So the first visit usually involves trimming the teeth under local anesthesia, making an accurate mold for the dental laboratory to fabricate the prosthesis. And finally, uh, sorry, and on the first visit also placement of a temporary bridge to function in the interim period. So only at the second appointment do you uh, get the permanent bridge. So the temporary bridge is being removed. Uh, the lapse between the first and second appointment is usually about uh, four to six weeks. And then we check for the fit, make some adjustments to the bite and uh, show the patient the bridge before it's cemented into place. So similarly, maintenance care is important as well. Uh, there's focus on regular flossing because food and uh, particles can get trapped underneath the bridge and the false tooth. So brushing, flossing is important as well as regular checkups to come back for reviews to ensure that the gums and the teeth, uh, the neighboring teeth are healthy. Okay, moving on to the last replacement option. A denture is a removable prosthesis used to replace missing teeth. So different from the first two options, this uh, option is actually removable, meaning it has to be removed uh, at night uh, when sleeping or after meals to rinse and keep it clean. So it's commonly referred to as false teeth. It is usually made of acrylic, which is a kind of plastic or a combination of plastic and metal. The metal is usually a framework that supports it, like the image on the upper right side. So a partial denture is used in cases where only some teeth are missing, but a complete denture, the image on the lower right side, is indicated when all the teeth are missing. So depending on the complexity of each case, the duration of the treatment will take about two to six visits to complete. After the initial visit for examination and diagnosis, the subsequent visits will include 
making impressions or mold of the teeth so that we can register the shape of the gums and soft tissue as well. After that, we need to make some measurements of the bite registration to check how the upper and lower teeth relate to each other. After this, uh, we will try in the denture, okay, in a wax trial base. So, and any adjustments in terms of the length, color can be done at this stage. And for the patient to have an idea of what the final denture will look like. Finally, we will issue the dentures and patients will need to be reviewed uh, usually in a couple of weeks to check how the patient is doing the denture, how adaptation is like, whether adjustments need to be made um, in terms of the biting and on the surface that fits the gums. So in certain cases, especially when all natural teeth are missing, uh, dental implants may be used to aid in supporting the complete dentures so that they do not move during function. So given all the options that we have, which one do we choose? We need to look at a few factors. Firstly, the number of teeth missing. So if there's only one or two teeth missing, uh, we can consider a fixed option like a bridge or an implant. Uh, usually if multiple teeth are missing, um, dentures may be indicated instead. The condition of the neighboring teeth and anatomical structures so we need to look at the health of the neighboring teeth, uh, for example, before we plan for a bridge. If the neighboring teeth are shaky or have large decay, uh, they may not be so ideal for abutments. And other options such as a denture may be indicated instead. We also need to look at uh, space available. Okay, for example, in the images shown earlier, if the space is too small, uh, replacement might not be possible in the first place. Also cost. In terms of uh, implants, it has the highest cost. So sometimes due to financial constraints, patients may opt for a denture instead. We need to look at a patient's medical history as well. So if a patient has complex medical history, uh, for example, undergoing uh, med many kinds of medical treatment, has prior radiation to the bone, uh, implants might not be so suitable for this case. Of course, the patient's preference and ability to adapt is important as well. Okay, so for example, patient has tried out a few sets of dentures and is just not able to tolerate something that's removable. We may need to plan for something that's fixed so that it's more comfortable for the patient. Also, we need to look at functional impairment, whether the loss of this tooth um, affects the patient's ability to eat or speak. So sometimes if just one tooth is missing, uh, there might not be a need to even replace it because patients can still get by with this one missing tooth. So leaving the space alone is certainly an option as well. Okay, with that, uh, thank you everyone for listening. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.